the uh, hour of impact on Christmas, by the way, has four minutes of wrestling. Mm -hmm. I mean, and listen, I get that it's, it's a holiday and we're trying to keep people tuned in. So we got lots of cute skits and such. Steiner and Booker are going to team up to take on Devon and AJ. And of course it turns into a beat down before the front line comes down to make the save. Foley comes down eventually puts Mr. Sacco on angle and announces that he'll make his in-ring debut for TNA at Genesis when he'll be teaming with Devon and styles to take on Booker Steiner and Nash. So Foley's back and it's a six man tag. Uh, we're going to lighten the load for Foley, but it, was this always the plan? He was going to come in and wrestle or did it just evolve over time? Strictly evolved. I mean, we, we knew when we signed him that we're going to get, or we were hopeful to get a, a, a match or two. And, and Mick was open and honest about it, but we all knew having Mick in the ring, wrestle week in and week out was diminishing returns. Not good for the product. Certainly wouldn't be good for Mick's health, but in the right circumstances, it's a, it's a, Grand slam. And my gut tells me, and I don't remember the specific conversations, but Mick probably was a big uh, proponent of, hey, for this first one, let's do a six-man tag. Rhino's going to show up with his clothes all torn up, his head's taped up because he's been cut from this beat down in this empty Charlotte parking lot. Cornette's trying to talk sense into him, saying, we can do the match another day. Rhino's going to grunt around and try to show that fighting spirit, but the fans, man, they don't care. Sting's their baby face. He's not in storyline. He's a heel and Rhino's the baby face, but we're cheering the big star sting. Very little to the match. Sting's going to hold a long bear hug. Rhino's going to miss a splash off the top. Sting uses a scorpion death drop. Rhino makes the ropes. The finish would see Rhino miss a gore and sting gets the pin with another scorpion death drop. It gets just a star in the observer. I know he's our champ. We got to find a spot for him. We did our best to make some chicken salad out of a bad situation here. If he's hurting for certain, that is what it is. Yep. Next up though, our main event, man, it's main event mafia with Scott Steiner, Booker T and what was supposed to be Kevin Nash, but now it's cute Kip and they're going to be taking on Mick Foley, AJ styles and brother Devon. Um, Booker T is using this weird voice and he introduces cute Kip as the third member. And it's written in the torch that he felt like the crowd thought it was a joke, but when people realized it was real, it was hit with a collective groan. They're trying to push that Kip was a big star talking about him being a former IC champ, a former hardcore champ and a 10 time tag champ. This is directly from the torch, but this guy was playing gay fashion designer a week ago and is best known for his ridiculous wardrobe. He cut a promo saying the Carolina Panthers suck to get heat, but it didn't get much heat. Kind of to do your best, man. You didn't expect Kevin Nash to not be there. But Kip took one for the team. So making a decision at the 11th hour or maybe yeah. past that yeah. is, is not always uh, productive. But let me roll the tape from you on what I think would have been a much better alternative. Okay. Me and Kurt wrestled 30 minutes before this, 20 minutes before this. That's right. Cornette's there. He's a figurehead. We would have been a lot better off for Booker and Scott to it's say, Kurt. Hey, what well, Nash is down. Nash is down. So we're going to make this a tag and, and have AJ and, um, who's Foley. AJ Devon and, and Foley. Foley. Let, let, let Foley say, Hey, then this is real simple. I know y'all came here to pay to see me, but it, it's not going to anyway, take them on a roller coaster ride and let Mick turn into a special referee. So you still get to see Sacco or potential of that at the right time, run Kurt down and yep. have him get involved and Mick take off his referee shirt and say, hell no, I'm back. It's back to a six man tag. Get a referee down here. Let them wrestle four or five minutes. Send them home happy that way. That's the audible we should have called, but we didn't. <laughs> uh, whose idea is cute Kip? First of all, I know people are picking on cute Kip here in the observer or the, or the torch rather. My man showed up to work that day and was asked, you got your gear with you? Let's go. He answered the call. What else can you ask for? This it wasn't man? his fault at all. It no, was a situation. No. It's look, I'll put it on my shoulders. Bad booking. 
And, yeah. and look, when we're at show day and I used to, yeah, I used to preach this Conrad. Hey guys, today is production day. It's not creative day. We're not writing the show here today. We're not going to talk about creative angles. We're going to go produce. And that's yeah. what we do here. So I have a feeling they thought, well, we better come up with an alternative before we run it by Jeff and they, you. and they just come and I blessed it. So I put it on myself, but it, it, it wasn't the best alternative by any stretch. They wind up fighting all outside of the ring and the referee rules it a double count out in eight minutes and 22 seconds. And Jim Cornette comes out and says, I've been doing wrestling in, in Charlotte for 25 years and we don't do things like that here. So he restarts the match. And Booker gets on the mic and says, no, the match is over. Cornette doesn't have the authority to restart the match. And Foley gets on the mic and says, Booker's right. Cornette does not have the authority to restart the match, but he does. And now it's a hardcore match. And they're using garbage can shots. And the torch would say they don't realize how Mickey mouse, this whole segment comes across. It's less than ideal. And the idea here is we're trying to tell a story that the front line is getting destroyed bad by the mafia. But in the last match, the front line ended up winning in the end. Unfortunately, people just don't care about the feud and really nobody can follow Jarrett angle. According to the torch. Plus for Foley's first match back, there was nothing to hang his hat on his knees and back are obviously in bad shape, but there was no great worker for him to work against. Nor did they go the gimmick route like they do so often with the best using barbed wire or thumbtacks. That's the thing I think is the biggest shame for me. This is Foley's first match with y'all, his first match back after a big layoff. And it's kind of, it kind of feels like an afterthought. No disrespect, but oh, people hey. wanted to see Devon with Bully Ray. And I know that's not the case. And we know AJ's one of the tippy top guys. So I get that. But you know, you kind of need, I don't know, this is less than ideal. And, and in an alternate universe, I kind of wish you and Kurt would have closed the show. Let's say you, well, a heel going over. We didn't want to leave the people of Charlotte. We thought the, see. the most simplistic deal would have been take all the Nash out, uh, Billy in. If, if, if that wouldn't have happened and you had a six man tag that go about eight, 10, 12 minutes and it, it paid off with Mick getting the win. I, th there's not such the bad taste. They can yeah. easily follow it. It, we just, to me, we, <laughs> boy, I'm really telling myself, we, we Connie, we made a bad situation much worse. Uh, what was Foley's reaction when it was all said and done? I don't remember. I, I am sure that he wasn't uh, over the moon happy about it, but also as a performer, he's probably thinking, "I survived," and 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 live, I would imagine the people, I don't say gave him the golf clap, but they they were happy to see Mick, and you know we pushed on through it. But from an overall weekly episodic TNA watcher pay per view consumer. We under delivered in the main event. Right. Period. Period.